Hi, I'm Brandon Anschultz, and I'm in my studio to talk about the show Suddenly Last Summer, opening at the Contemporary Art Museum. The show is going to be um, a sort of immersive installation of mostly sculptural works. And uh, my work always sort of begins with the kernel of the idea of, of painting and different ways to think about and, uh, and use paint in non-traditional senses. There, there won't be um, a canvas on the wall in the show. It's more about sort of how I can use paint um, to make physical objects. So you'll walk into the space and you'll see uh, my sculptures presented on these sort of articulated pedestals. And I'm thinking of the pedestals in a couple of different ways. Um, as pedestals um, like this, as you know, an object to hold another object. But I'm also thinking of them in terms of, in terms of furniture, in terms of sculpture on their own. And referring back to um, my idea of the show. The title, Suddenly Last Summer, is a reference to the Tennessee Williams play and the movie of the same name. And in that movie, most of the action takes place in a courtyard garden in an old New Orleans uh, Gothic mansion. And so in, in this garden, there are a lot of sort of interesting tropical and prehistoric plants. And I, I use that as a departure point. I'm not literally recre recreating a garden, but I, I'm taking that idea and, and using it as, as my starting point. So when I talk about uh, the, the sculptural works in terms of painting, uh, I'm, I'm really meaning that they're literally made of paint. Um, the objects themselves start with um, something. They start with either pieces of wood, either uh, more traditional paintings that are then sort of squished down and then covered with layer upon layer of paint um, to sort of to create this sort of meliophoria effect where you know there's different levels of paint, uh, sort of like a geode. It, there's sort of a, a history of the object within the object. And uh, some of them get cut into, into parts, so you do see that history. Other, others of them are more impenetrable, where um, you, know, you can see that it, it's just the paint and the objects hidden inside. So the sculptural objects, um, what they're made of besides paint, uh, they're usually made around something else. You know, in, in this instance, it is a collection of the, the vinyl gloves that I use when I'm making everything. So I try, I try to recycle sort of all my studio, or not all, but a lot of my studio e ephemera back into the work. So you know, the, this, this was a, a layer of, of those gloves put together and then covered with the paint and covered with the paint and covered with the paint and then bisected back again. But it's not always ephemera. Uh, in, in the case of a sculpture like this, um, this began, the kernel of it was another painting. So I make these sort of really fast, uh, fast and loose paintings on this really pedestrian foam. And I, I, I do them sort of like a tie-dye, sort of uh, in a really fast sort of expressive gesture with, with dye and with um, inks of different sorts and get, get reactions. And they themselves become paintings and I do present them occasionally as paintings, but they also get you know, literally wadded up uh, around other sculptures into the sculptures themselves, and then they become the substance that the sculpture gets made out of. So, you know, again, it's this sort of idea of of, of painting in multiple different ways. I, I think for me, for me, painting's sort of ubiquitous, whether I'm making sculptures or anything else. I do have some rules about the things that that I use within the sculptures. They need to either come directly out of the process of making something else, you know, the leftover wood from making one of the pedestal forms. Or it can be, um, you know, I, I, there's a, a pair of shoes of mine over here that I wore for five years. There's a, a belt in here that I wore for almost 20 years. My, my old Blackberry is inside one of them. Uh, I, I took apart a laptop and parts of it are in different parts of the sculptures. You know, for this show, since the content was a little bit about New Orleans and a little bit about um, that movie. I, I did go on a trip to New Orleans and specifically sought out some things to put in the show, some, some things from older homes, some things that were a little bit more feminine, uh, jewelry, things like that. Um, stuff that. Stuff that related kind of to the, to, the, to the kernel of the idea. 
Uh, another thing I'm incorporating uh, into this exhibition are mirrors and reflective surfaces. I really like the idea of, again, the objects being self-referential, and I think that that is, is sort of pounded in a little bit more by you being able to see the objects again and again in, in their own reflections. You know, I, I like the multiple ideas that can go with a mirror. You know, a mirror is, is something that's shiny. You see yourself in it. You bring yourself into the work that way. They also mimic, uh, you know, phone screens, computer screens, the things that everyone's looking at every day. So back here is the more sort of production side of the, the paint sculptures that I'm making. And I, you know, I've got uh, about 10 different colors of, of latex paint that I've been mixing together and adjusting to get the, the, the precise colors that I want. And it's a little bit dependent on chance, depending on what colors I can find and how those colors mix together. But it's also um, pretty strategic as well. I, I, want the, I want the color of the objects, the color of the, um, the pedestals to work in a certain way. And then, then a really exciting part of the process for me, the ones that I cut back into and sort of open up, I've usually by that point forgotten what color process they've gone through, forgotten what's inside them. And that's really pretty interesting for me to find out sort of what I've been doing. It's a nice, it's a nice surprise in the studio.